Good day to you viewers. Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, we're looking at types of pedigree analysis. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe and press the notification button so that you will always be not notified anytime we post new videos. In the last class, we look at symbols used in pedigree analysis. If you know you have not watched the video, I will kindly recommend that video for you because you need the understanding of the last video to understand what we'll be looking at in today's class. As I've said earlier, we're looking at types of pedigree analysis. Based on the types of chromosomes, pedigree analysis can be classified into two. We have the autosomal pedigree and the sex-linked pedigree. Autosomal pedigree and sex-linked pedigree. Looking at our past knowledge of uh, types of chromosomes, we have octosomal chromosomes and sex link chromosomes. Without understanding of octosomal chromosomes and sex link chromosomes, that's the same knowledge was used to classify pedigree into autosomal pedigree and sex link pedigree. Under octosomal pedigree, autosomal pedigree can also be further subdivided into two, two types. We have the autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive. Autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive are under autosomal pedigree analysis. While for sex link pedigree, we have the X link dominant, X link recessive, and Y link pedigree. So, all together, we have five types of pedigree analysis autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X link dominant, X link recessive, and Y link pedigree. Don't forget. Octosomal dominant and autosomal recessive are under autosomal pedigree analysis, while X link dominant, X link recessive, and Y link recessive are under sex link pedigree. To understand autosomal dominant pedigree, there are some basic rules that you have to know. The first rule under autosomal dominant pedigree is number one is that. Because they are dominant, autosomal, autosomal, uh, autosomal dominant, because they are dominant, they, will, they do not skip generation. Meaning that they will always reoccur in every generation. Look at the ones, the symbols on the board, the pedigree on the board. The parents are affected. The first filial generations are affected. The second filial generations are affected. So it means that autosomal dominant will not skip generation. They will always reoccur in every generation. That is rule number one. Rule number two is that autosomal dominant affected, we affect both the male and the female. That is, it will affect both the male and the female. In, in, in the first filial generation, the male is affected, the female is affected. In the second filial generation, the male is affected, the female is affected. Rule number one, they did not skip generation. Rule number two, they affect both male and female. That is, we have affected male and affected female. Rule number three, and that is very important, affected parents, we always, affected parents, we always have affected children. Affected male parents, we always have affected children because they are dominant genes. They are dominant genes. Affected parents, we always have affected children. As you can see in F, first filial generation and second filial generation. And another rule that you need to note is that uh, it is possible for affected parents, it is possible for affected parents to have unaffected children. Note that it is possible for affected parents to have unaffected children. As you can see, the two parents are affected. But this one, this female here is non affected, is a normal female. So affected children, affected parents can have affected, can have affected children and they can also have unaffected children. However, unaffected parents cannot have affected children. Unaffected parents cannot have affected children, as you can see. This is not possible under autosomal dominant. This is not possible because we have the two parents are non-affected and this one is affected children. No, it is not possible. But 
in autosomal dominant affected parent can have non affected children so quickly let's do a recap of the rule over again rule number one autosomal dominant do not skip generation rule number two they affect both male and the female rule number three affected parents will possibly have affected children rule number four affected parents can have non-affected children Autosoma recessive dominance. Autosoma recessive pedigree. In autosoma recessive pedigree, they skip generation. That's rule number one. They skip generation. You can see it's it occurs in first filial generation, access in second general generation, reoccurs in third filial generation. So for autosoma recessive, they do skip generation. That is why they are recessive. They are the, 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 the gene can be marked. The gene may not be expressed at a particular generation, and the gene may also be expressed again at other subsequent generation. Rule number two, as it is applicable to the dominant trait, it is also applicable to the recessive trait. They affect both male and female equally. They affect both male and female equally. Rule number three that you need to know: all affected parents can have affected children please note that for autosomal recessive for autosomal recessive the first rule is they do not skip generation they affect both male and female equally and also all affected parents can have affected children those are the basic rules involved when dealing with autosomal recessive and autosomal dominant for autosomal dominant let's go over it again for autosomal dominant Affected parents can have affected children. Also, affected parents can have unaffected children. But for autosomal recessive, unaffected parents can have affected children. And affected parents cannot have unaffected children or offspring. Furthermore, we will also be looking at X-linked recessive pedigree, X-linked dominance and X-linked, Y-linked pedigree. All together, the three of them are under sex-linked pedigree. Sex-linked pedigree. Because they have to do with sex-linked chromosome. Now, the rule for X-linked recessive is very straightforward. The rule for X-linked recessive is straightforward. Is a mother we transfer or transmit the gene to the son. It is from the mother to the son. It can only be transmitted from the mother to the son. It can be transmitted from the mother to the son. And that the, 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 the acronym is MSR. That is from mother to son and it is recessive. MSR, from mother to son and it is recessive because for x-link recessive the for x-link recessive the gene is always on the x chromosome it's always on the x chromosome it's not on the y chromosome and don't forget that for the man the man have x y and the female have x x and the gene is a let's assume this is the gene allele a a this, these are the two genes responsible for the trait we are looking at. So the male will be receiving the Y chromosome from the dad or from the man. The, and don't forget that the Y chromosome does not have the gene. It doesn't have the gene. So the, this son received the Y chromosome from the dad. Why did he receive the X chromosome from the female? And the two X chromosomes have the recessive gene it has the recessive gene and that's why it's always been transferred from the mother to the son it's been transferred from the mother to the son because the y chromosomes lack the gene responsible for that for that particular trait why the x chromosome Possess the gene responsible for that particular trait. And that's why it's always been transferred from the mother to the son. From the mother to the son. That is the basic rule for X-linked recessive. For X-linked dominant, 
it is transferred from the father to the daughter. FDD. That is from the father to the daughter, and it is dominant. So for X ring dominant, it is transferred or it is transmitted, it is transmit from transmitted from the father to the daughter. From the father to the daughter. While for X ring recessive, it is transmitted from the mother to the son and it is recessive. That is, it will not be expressed, it will be marked. For Y link pedigree, for Y link pedigree, Y link pedigree. For Y link pedigree, it is only transmitted from the mother to from the father to the son. Y link pedigree is transmitted from the father to the son. Because Y link pedigree is only on the Y chromosome. It's only on the Y chromosome. Only on the Y chromosome. And it is only a man that has the Y chromosome. So that means that this son will be receiving the Y chromosome from the man. And don't forget that this gene is on the Y chromosome. So it can only be transmitted from Y, from the man to the son. That's for Y link chromosome. In fact, Y link chromosome, Y link pedigree is the, is the most simplest form of every form of pedigree because it is straightforward. It is straightforward. Y link pedigree can only be transmitted from the, fa from the father to the son. As you can see here, from the father to the son, from the affected father to the son. And it is a straightforward form of pedigree. If you have any question, you can comment on the comment section. Any questions, suggestions, you can comment on the comment section.